When I start patients on insulin, if they are in a catabolic state, meaning A1C above nine, and losing weight at the same time, or looking sick, then I start basal and meal time right away. Now if patients cannot handle four injections a day, one option in those patients is to, is to use a premixed insulin as a twice a day injection. It's not ideal, but it's a good way to start. Until patients get more diabetes education, then we can convert that to a basal mealtime regimen. If patients are not in a catabolic state, many times patients find it much easier and more convenient to start one injection of a basal insulin and make titration of it over time until we see over weeks to months if we need to add a mealtime insulin. So it depends on every patient. It depends on how they present to me with a high A1C and their symptoms at the same time. When I'm looking at patients to decide to start insulin, um, there's a couple of things I might look at. First of all, what other therapies are on board? Are they working? What's the A1C, the age of the patient, other comorbids? But most of my patients are gonna to need to progress to insulin. And I'm a specialist, so I'm gonna put most of my patients on insulin. But if your A1C is high, and you're not achieving goals on oral agents, you need to think about a basal insulin. And you need to understand what the basal insulin does. It controls fasting blood sugars, and I like to think about it as the background for the rest of the day. So it keeps the blood sugars at a steady state for the 24 hours we're giving that type of insulin. Now, as I get the A1C down, and what we've learned is that if you get the A1C less than 8%, for many of our patients, we need to start thinking about what's happening with the postprandial blood sugars, two hours after meals. And if I'm unable to control the A1C and get them to treatment goal on a basal insulin only, I need to start thinking about mealtime insulin. Now, it may not be all three meals at once. I may start at the largest meal then give it to a second meal. And some patients do very well on basil and two meals a day, or I may need three meals a day. But you have to understand that the basal insulin is for the 24-hour coverage, wake up with a good blood glucose, and that the bolus insulin is designed for the blood glucose before the meal and the food, the carbohydrate in the food that the patient is consuming. From the standpoint of educating our patients, we should really try to put ourselves in the patient's shoes and understand what it's like to live with diabetes and what we're asking them to do. First of all, the patient doesn't want to be on insulin. They've often negotiated to try to avoid insulin for as long as possible and they sort of dread that first injection. So the more time we spend emphasizing with the patient the benefit of blood sugar control, the fact that because diabetes is progressive, going on to insulin isn't necessarily their fault, and that insulin is just one tool that we have to treat diabetes and a very effective tool at that. But the more time we spend with education, patients will do better taking their insulin. So when we start patients on insulin or we make a significant change in insulin therapy, it's not just the mechanics of how do you administer the insulin, it's also reviewing safety factors like recognition and treatment of hypoglycemia, how often should they be checking their blood sugars, how's the insulin going to be adjusted, and have an ear to what the patient's going on in their lives and understand how it fits into their lifestyle. And also very helpful is having a significant in other in there, whether it's a spouse or a sibling or, or you know, um, um, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, someone that can be their coach and support them through this. Finally, when it comes to an insulin therapy, uh, or any injectable therapy for that matter, it's ideal if they get their first injection at that time. So if you can do point of care education that includes that first injection, you've demystified a lot of the concerns that they have about the injection itself. So when I start bolus insulin or mealtime insulin, and it could be for just the meals, it could be to cover snacks, there's a lot of reasons that you might use um, a rapid acting insulin. Um, you don't wanna necessarily give the patient a sliding scale. The problem with a sliding scale is that it is um, too late. The, the insulin is too late, meaning that you're looking at a blood glucose and you're giving an insulin for that blood glucose, but you're not accounting for the food intake. So when you think about how to regulate um, a, a rapid acting insulin, you need to look at the blood sugar and do a correction for the blood sugar. Then you need to give that patient a coverage for the food intake. So it's sort of like two parts. The other thing is you need to give it before the meal. 
10 to 15 minutes before the meal because it's to cover the food. And if I give it during the meal or after the meal, I'm gonna have a mismatch of the insulin. So look at the blood sugar, and you have to have a component of that to cover the blood sugar, a component to cover the carbohydrates, and give it 10 to 15 minutes before the meal.